gauging the supernatural power of love. Nothing defines the future like the nature. The future of every believer is defined by his nature. If you are not growing your God nature, your ultimate destiny will suffer in the future. Nothing limits the future like the nature. So when you hear someone say, it's my nature, it's my nature, just know that he's confirming his limitation. He has placed a limit on himself. Oh, it's my nature, it's my nature. You don't celebrate bad nature. Because bad nature will not allow you to be placed in a good place. Now, I agree that the human flesh is limited, but we have another nature in Christ. That nature is what enables us to triumph, and that is the nature of love. Tell your neighbor the nature of love. Love is the nature of God. In fact, love is God. By predestination, that is your real nature. If you are not growing in love, you are not growing in life. If you are not growing in love, you are not growing in life. Growing in love is what enables you to become more like God. Become more like God. As you make desperate efforts to grow in love, you enjoy the grace of God. You enjoy the power of God. You enjoy the goodness of God. Jesus said, if you abide in me, he said, I and my father will make ourselves manifest in thee. So you need to grow in love and for you to grow in love, you must abide in love. I know there are situations that will want to make you react. Go off course. Take contrary decision. But hear me, you need to understand where you are going first. You need to understand where you are going. Satan is a craft master. He knows how to scheme you out of love. And the moment you do, you will no longer be walking in the ways of God. It's cheap to know when you have started deviating. It's very easy to know when you have started misbehaving. When you are no longer walking in the love of God. As long as you remain in love, you are now a partner with Christ. And partner with God. As long as you remain, oh, because you can choose to say, I won't go buy something, come back. <laughs> as long as you remain in love, you are a partner with Christ and partner with God. Remaining in partnership makes you invisible against every works of the devil. The enemy can win you. Now let me take for example now. No devil can attack your wife 
as long as both of you are working as one. No devil can attack your husband if he's not doing touching body outside. Am I saying the truth? As long as you remain bonded partners, you become very difficult for the enemy to defeat. Enemy can win you. Remaining in acne partnership with God means that uh, you cannot break the love bond. The love bond is what keeps life going, keeps life exciting, keeps life fulfilling. As long as the love bond remains, the vision remains one. You know, it's possible for husband and wife to have different, different vision. And the moment they have a different vision, they will have different ministry. And when they have different ministry, they will have different visitors. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They will have different visitors. But if the vision is one, the strength is un unbreakable. One shall chase a thousand. Two shall do what? Chase 10,000. And they will have a better reward for their labor. Once vision is in place, pursuit is guaranteed. If we are truly bonded in love with God, soul winning will not be a struggle. Now everybody is in church on Sunday. Thursday! Saturday, we are not up to 1,000 to go out for outreach. And we are averagely more than 4,000 every Sunday. When you are bonded in law, whatever God is pursuing is what you are pursuing. What interests God is what interests you. What moves God is what moves you. And that is why once the vision is the same, the pursuit is the same, flowing in the supernatural is not a struggle. It's not a struggle. It's not a struggle. Because you are enjoying the same immunity. Your divine nature comes alive every time your heart is flowing with God. Your thoughts flowing with God. We read the other day, as the heaven is far from the earth, so are my ways far from your ways, and my thoughts from your thoughts. Why? We're in the same direction. Pursuing the same thing. Walking towards the same goal. You can't carry a heart of love for God and not operate signs and wonders cheaply. Your heart for God is what determines the kind of signs you manifest. You know, signs grows. As you are growing in love, you are growing in signs. Anytime I say growing in love, I'm talking about growing in the nature of God. The principal nature of God is love. Why? You will not like to see anyone perish. Even though there are some that have signed themselves to the devil to be wasted. So walking in love is very crucial in maintaining your supernatural nature. Your supernatural identity. You can lose it the moment you walk out on love.
So you dare not walk out on the love of God. Why? Because you will lose your supernatural covering. The moment you walk out on the love of God, you will not only lose your supernatural covering, you are exposed to satanic attacks. Draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. What increased love is fellowship. Tell your neighbor fellowship. The more the fellowship, the strength in the bond becomes. The bonds become more strengthened, more strengthened. When you are truly in love, you will seek every opportunity to make your father's house blossom, flourish. Anyone you are in love with, you watch out for his affairs. How things are happening for him. What you need to do to make his life better. Am I correct? If this is your father's house, where is your love? Like we are meant to understand the other day, the reason why we are on a mission for soul winning is not to increase attendance, but to rescue those Satan has programmed to be destroyed. To rescue those Satan has programmed to be destroyed. Remember last Sunday we read a testimony of a man that's programmed to commit suicide. And after Papa went for the outreach, he was rescued. Rescued! Which means that soul would have been lost to hell now. But thank God for that intervention. So growing in love is consolidating your supernatural nature which gives you an opportunity to flow in consistent signs and wonders. Consistent signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are meant to be daily occurrence. Not once in a while. Daily. You are supposed to be seeing it daily. But let me say this this morning. There is a great consequence of not walking in love. Great consequence of not walking in love. There are too many things. Living healthy is cheap. Say with me, it's cheap. We are going to look at five different things now that will enable us live healthy. The first one is right thinking. Say with me, right thinking. I've always said this. If God will do some um, heart check now for everybody that is seated here, before it will get to some people's turn, they will run away. That is not say every person come and stand there so that uh, as you are standing here, they will be reading everything that is in your heart. Some people will take off. You agree with me? Some people will take off before it is their turn. It is impossible for you to live in health when you carry bitterness in your heart. Bitterness troubles the flesh. It troubles the blood. The physical blood, oh, it troubles the blood. There are many things let me put it this way. We have more sick minds in church than sick bodies. What makes some people's mind to be sick is the thing that go on in their mind. 
I've mentioned bitterness. Do you know that bitterness poisons your blood physically? That's why there are some people that carry some offensive body odor. I'm telling you now, you don't know that before. Offensive body odor is not that you are sweating too much. It's a sign that you have some chronic bitterness. I know some things, so I'm telling you now. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And if you are growing in bitterness, you may die quick. Should I tell you something? High blood pressure will soon catch you. There was a woman my pastor sent me to go and pray for some time. I went to the to the, to the hospital. It was a hospital. Living World Hospital. The doctor that was attending to her was our member. We said that uh, there will be need for someone to pray for this woman. So as I was praying for the woman, she was crying. I knew something was wrong. So after praying for her, I was not in a hurry to leave. The doctors came for word round. I excused myself and after a while, I came back. So I asked her, where were you crying when I was praying? He said, there is something that happened that led to this stroke. So I said, can you tell me what it is? I believe God wants to intervene. She started crying again. Anytime she wants to say it, she will cry again. So I now had to like invite that doctor to come. That there is something this woman needs to tell me. But she's crying and the thing is not uh, flowing. So she finally summed up courage that the husband offended her some years ago. And that offense is growing day by day until it now led to what she is going through. Because the doctor said that they have checked that this one is not medical, it is spiritual. I hope you know Bitterness and anger, they travel together. Five and six. So she was hit with that partial stroke. It was partial. It has not gone that far. It has not entered the real one. <laughs> so after talking with her, she was able to open up and say everything. When I said that, uh, and I asked her, Jesus can heal you, but you need to let go. She didn't know the meaning of let go. And I said, forgive him. She started crying again. <laughs> lie, lie, I don't go, go, I don't go, grieve. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Ah, she just cried. Meaning, I go hold this thing tight. Should I tell you something? Your heart is too small to carry heavy load. How much more? Go carry one heavy man. Like cement. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So we have to be putting pressure on her, putting pressure on her. Finally, she agreed. And she agreed. As she was agreeing, she was still crying, you know, which means the thing was uh, going small, small. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Wrong thinking is an enemy of healthy living. Wrong thinking. So after that process, we are visiting her regularly, visiting her regularly, visiting her regularly. And before you know what's happening, she recovered. The stroke disappeared. To the point that we even saw her driving her car. Scripture says, Mary heart do it good like medicine, but a dry spirit. Hear me? 
there are some healings that only you can help yourself. As I'm talking to someone, I'm talking to somebody now. Only you can help yourself. That, I don't care what you think. Now you, they suffer the thing. Yes! I don't care what you think. You are the one suffering the effect. You can even be thinking bad about me. Now you, they suffer. Who carry the weight? Carry him, carry him. If I carry it away, don't drop it. Oh. <laughs> the more you carry some, carry some hurt, you are torturing your flesh. You can't be normal. Wrong thinking disfigures your mentality. You can't think straight. At times, it looks as if you are losing memory. Losing memory. Wrong thinking. A merry heart do it good like medicine. Get excited about yourself. Some carry thoughts of hatred. They carry thoughts of hatred as if they, they win a word. You don't win a word for hatred. Neither do you win a word for uh, uh, looking for people that will hate somebody for you. You know, it's, it's, it's normal. I can come and influence this person now, hate this person for me. Just like uh, Balak did in um, Numbers 23. Come, cause me Balaam. They will induce you, influence you with all manner of things. You are dying. Can you see cheap, cheap ways the enemy is puncturing people's heads? Hear this? Depression and oppression go together. Satan can't oppress you if he has not first depressed you. And how will he oppress you with one bad news, one bad thought? One bad news, one bad thought. I was listening to the story of um, an American and the wife. He is 105, the wife is 103. What is the secret of your long life? They said number one, healthy thoughts. What did I say? Healthy thoughts. Be healthy in your thoughts. Be healthy in your thoughts. Right thinking, right thinking. So we right thinking you are free. Do you know that people that are not thinking right, they are not always free? Yes. There is always a sense of apprehension that somebody wants to do me evil. Somebody wants to attack me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not free. Even in the office, the person is not free. Hey. This one where they go out now. No sure say Amos. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Amos. This Amos. No wonder every time you see people around the office, this Amos. It's a sign that that person's thought is dead. When I traveled, did I call any of you? Did I call you? Call you for what? I'm not afraid now. You can't carry my chair. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Did I call you to ask did, how did pastor preach? Was the message hot? I didn't call anybody. Why? Because I'm not afraid. Your shining cannot hinder my shining. As you are shining, I'm shining. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But people that are always afraid, only God know what Pastor Kelly they do now. Tell your neighbor, carry a healthy thought. Bad thoughts now poison. It poisons your spirit, poisons your soul, poisons your body. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You see bitterness, you see hatred, you see anger, they travel on the same frequency. And they damage your health without you knowing. Number two, 
It's right talking. Talk right if you must live long. Scripture says hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. It said, them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So with your mouth, you are buying death. And with your mouth too, you are buying life. Apostle Peter said, if you must see many better days, keep your mouth from speaking God. Stop talking evil. Stop tearing people. Stop blackmailing people. You will die quick. David said, let not an evil speaker be established. Your mouth is the gateway to hell the living. Your mouth also is the gateway to death. One young man was speaking evil against Papa. He ran mad. He ran mad. What is even killing some people now is the things they are saying in their mouth. Some unconscious they say, I don't care for this life. The angels go reply, the boss will go carry you the way to. Some people at times they just say, Pastor, I'm tired of this life. I feel like dying. With you, they wait. Do you need to tell me? You have heard such words before. Those are signs that uh, you are about to go. You are signing your death warrant. Right talking. Talk right. Anything you don't know, don't go and put your mouth. Anything you are not sure of, don't put your mouth. You may die because of it. The mouth carries fire. It's an eliminator. It's an extinguisher. It's a trigger. Right words. Let's only write words. David said, may the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Acceptable in thy sight. One young man I heard that he has been speaking against Papa, Adeboye, against Kumi, against uh, what's his name? Bishop Michael Konko. He's behaving like a vagabond. He's a pastor now. He's a pastor. He's a vagabond now. Anywhere he go, they will drive him. Anywhere he go, they will drive him. Do you know why? He has used the mouth to buy debt. Just be talking. Be talking, no. Oh. It's my nature. I don't go talk. It's my nature. Be talking. There are people in church. There is, there is no oil. If you like, pour one drum of oil. Give them the whole communion. Wash their feet every minute. They may not recover. Do you know why? Gossip. They are the CNN of the church. If you want to get the latest information, they have branches in all the departments. They have their communicating link. Protocol, choir, CCU, Usher, Sanctuary, traffic everywhere they have their network you don't hear you don't hear they are sick their spirit is sick their mind is sick so their body will be sick no wonder solomon the wise man said a fool even if when he keeps quiet is regarded as a wise man a fool Do you know why many can't, can't go far? Hear this. 
they have used their mouth to puncturing their going far. Even if they were destined to go far. So watch your mouth. Scripture say, bridle thy tongue. Bridle, that is, watch, watch it, watch it. It's not every time you open your mouth to talk. Matters you don't know that doesn't even concern you. You, not, you are not champion. I will fight this cause in LFC Lafia. In the process, Satan is pushing you. Say, carry on, carry on. We are, your opposition, nobody wants to come. Just come. Your mouth is the gateway to your life. Number three, right eating. Do you know if you are eating wrong, you are your winch? You are the one winching yourself. If you must live long, you must eat right. Tell your neighbor, eat right. How many like eating meat? If you say you need to eat meat, they lie. How many like eating meat? Be sincere. Oh. I want to say something. Be sincere. Hallelujah. Now, shall I tell you, having plenty meat in your plate is not a sign that you are living well. It's a sign that you are foolish. <laughs> Madawa, am I correct? It's not a sign that you are living well. Do you know that blood meat, eh? There's a level you reach, you stop it. It's meant for children. It's meant for children. Adults, people that want to enjoy long life, they don't eat blood meat. But that's what many of you give me tozo. <laughs> <laughs> you are not normal. You are not normal. <laughs> He's wrong. Are you wrong saying now? He's wrong. If we buy blood meat, are you wrong saying now? We leave it for the children. Is it that we are eating the intestine or cow tail or cow leg? But anyhow, anyhow, you've, you're level the inside. Don't say cow tail is for only big men. Then born you poor. God curse you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Even if that one is too expensive, you can buy goat meat. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Eh? Little by little, just be growing. I know there are some people inside this church that are eating pig meat. How many hours does it take pig meat to digest? Say the truth. How many hours? It takes longer. 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 You swallow it in the morning, swallow it in the afternoon, swallow it in the evening. Your body is in trouble. Do you know when you overpressure the liver and the kidney, you are reducing your life? There's what they call half life in physics. You are increasing your half life. If you were to stay up to 90, you may end up with 52 or 53 or 55. I'm saying, you are saying, hey. I'm telling you now. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Do you know why the whites, they live healthy? Vegetable. And we have it. It's not luxury. We have watermelon. We have carrots. We have garden egg. When you see it, it looks like this. You don't pass. You think it's expensive. That is their thinking, you know. I will have been eating it. Is this in food? You blast apple in the morning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Excess carbohydrate increases your blood sugar. 
And if your blood sugar is on the rise, you may soon catch stroke. Or you may soon catch diabetes. Most diabetes are not hereditary. You didn't inherit it from your forefathers. Some of you, you whack the thing with your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Some people now they are celebrating fat as healthy living. <laughs> you are not living healthy. I'm the one telling you. Your destiny is under pressure. Please don't celebrate that you are fat. If you are fat now, I'm talking to you. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Seek ways to burn off the fat so that you can live long. Do you see how obese patients, obesity, obesity is a disease that is over fat people. Do you see how they breathe? If they work as more, they will. <laughs> Praise God. Everything God needed for our health, he provided it. Some of these things that we are saying, now nah, nah, winch, do it like this, now nah, like no winch, now nah, you do it, now nah, you be the winch. Do you know, water can make you healthy. Every morning before you go out, one full or two, one liter of water, even if you can't take up to one liter, you take water after brushing your mouth. Don't eat yet. Do you know what it will do? all the toxins and amino acid, it will flush it. You are reducing the acidity of your body by drinking water. People that drink, that is one of the Chinese secrets. Every morning, just take water. Not that at the moment you finish brushing, you look for where the fried meat is. You look for where the food is. No! Neutralize all the things that have been accumulated. Send it out first. Send it out. Send it out. The moment I take off in the morning and I didn't drink water, I say, Brian, stop. Wherever you find water, I want to drink water now. I didn't drink water. But as I wake up, the first thing I will do, I will go to the kitchen and carry two sachets. As I finish brushing, I squeeze them, I drink. My first food every day is water. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So you see, you can live healthy. Some people here, their problem is coke. 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 Malt. I'm not saying malt is not good. Or once in a while you can drink coke. But every day moth. Every day moth. We may run an emergency on you very soon. But please, caution. You can live healthy. Right eating. Right eating. Right eating. Right eating. Right eating. Some people just eat junks. They don't eat junks. You see your pa, you buy. You see African salad, you buy. You are in trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please, let's watch it. It is not healthy. The next one. I hope it's making sense to someone. I pray it makes sense to you. I pray it makes sense to you. If Kenneth Copeland at 82 is still flying his plane, he's still flying his plane, oh, me, I don't know where he don't reach. Where they do like old mama and old papa. People that are old, they are still strong. He's not using walking stick at 82. What is your problem? You can live healthy. Number four is right living. Tell your neighbor right living.
living upright is critical to living healthy. Scripture says righteousness exalts a nation for sin is a reproach to a people. So unrighteousness disconnects you from the presence of God. What is righteousness? Taking a right stand. There are stands you must take with God. There are stands you must not take Right living requires you to have a healthy conscience. Having a conscience that is alive in God. Do you know when your conscience is wrong, you suffer more depression. Anytime you are doing bad secretly to be hurting you. Every one of us here, we have what we call an internal policeman. When your thoughts are not wrong, when you have bought a wrong thought, your internal policeman will be judging you. Say, this thing you are thinking is not right. This thing you are thinking is not right. When your conscience begins to go there, you are on your way to destruction. Do you know again? You can you can silence me. You can silence all the pastors. You can silence your conscience. It will roar. This thing you are doing is evil. This thing you are doing is not good. It will be telling you even when you are praying. You are in church, oh. This thing you are doing is not good, though. It's still talking to you. Your conscience cannot go dead if you are not working with someone with a dead conscience. Anyone that his conscience is dying, there is someone Satan has planted to kill it. Because he wants you to die like the way he's died. He wants you to waste like he's been wasted. It takes someone whose conscience is alive to awaken your own conscience too. Beds of the same feather they flock together. Before your conscience go dead, there must be someone within your magnetic field, within, around you, that Satan has planted. Kill this person. Kill this person. He can kill you through WhatsApp. He can kill you through phone call. He can kill you through contacts. Before you know what's happening, your conscience is being buried. It's being buried. You are going down. And once your conscience begins to go down, the gateway to satanic attack is open. Paul says some have made a shipwreck of their conscience and they have denied their faith. You hear me? Faith goes with a good conscience. Faith cannot work with a bad conscience. Faith cannot generate results with a bad conscience. What does it mean to have a bad conscience? Carry thoughts that are not clean. When you carry thoughts that are defiled, defiling thoughts, Thoughts that are not edifying. Thoughts that you only share in secret with people in your, just like I said, that the CNN of the church, they have people in all the departments. They know where they meet. They know how to connect each other. They can't share it with everybody. Dead conscience. When they see that you are interested in the matter, they just carry you. Will I say you like this, our team? This is the winning team in LFC Lafia. <laughs> dead conscience but I want to let you know that for you to live healthy your conscience must be healthy for your spirit man to be alive 
if your conscience is not healthy your spirit man can never be alive Who finished the conscience of Ammon? Who finished it? It was his friend. It was his friend that told him, this one where they see your sister around you, be like, say, he like you. So, be like, say, you need to take advantage of this opportunity. Oh. So, just pretend that you are sick. Tell your father, say, make Ammon bring food. I mean, Tama bring food. Since she, since he like you. So, so he now pretended that uh, malaria, something was catching him. And Tamana came and he defied his own sister. Who planted it for him? His friend. If you have an evil conscience, someone has planted it in you. And you will definitely be like the person. But thank God we are face to face with the communion today. Do you know what? Let me say this before we face the communion. Once your conscience go dead, your thinking is no longer balanced. The floodgate of creativity is blocked. The floodgate of inspiration is blocked. The floodgate of idea is jammed. Why? Wrong thinking. They flow in the same direction. So since you have killed this one, now this one then go flow. That is why by this communion today, in whichever way the enemy is attacking your total health, mentally, spiritually, physically, there will be healing for you. Yeah. I'm taking it in this dimension because second service, we will shift to the other angle. And third service, we are going to be heal smiting the afflictor because there is no affliction without an afflictor. Second service, we'll be dealing with afflictions. But this one, we are dealing with mental sickness, mouth sickness, Mind sickness. The communion is one divine guarantee for total health. Why? It can kill any habits. It can kill any nature that opens the door of sickness. The communion opens to us the actual flesh and blood of Jesus, which is a divine mystery. It is a mystery and a cure to any form of reproach. It's a cure to any form of reproach. In Matthew 26 and verse 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it of this. Take it. This is my body. There is something unique in the body. He introduced his body as a mystery. Nobody can explain it. But that mystery is the cure to any form of sickness. Any form. Any form. Any form of sickness. It can destroy the power controlling any affliction in your body. Because every affliction has a sponsor. So when we partake of the communion, the power controlling this affliction is disconnected. And we are reconnected. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
So the communion does what we call a disconnecting to a reconnecting. It disconnects the power controlling the affliction. It reconnects you to the source of life. Source of divine health. No wonder the apostles, they were partaking of the communion daily. They were breaking bread daily. So the quality of my life, the quality of my health is a function of the communion. I remember one young boy that came for holiday where his uncle was living. He cannot walk two poles without resting. He was 13. That is pole to pole. One pole, the next one. He cannot walk without resting. He had what we call weak heart. After taking the communion for over a month, something happened. His heart jacked back to life. Jacked back to life. So the uncle, they were coming for service one day. He now told his uncle that uh, they should be going. They were coming with the guy. He said they should be going. That he wants to trek. They say trek. Trek for what? He said, no, he wants to trek. That he wants to confirm something. Do you know what he wanted to confirm? What he was feeling. He trekked to church without stopping. So the, he now told his uncle that uh, he's healed. So the uh, uncle now said, what happened to you? He said, before I came, I cannot walk two poles without stopping. But now, I trekked to church. I am going to trek back again. Hear me? Whatever is weak in your system, this communion will heal you. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. There was another sister. I won't forget her. Her own was very unique. The moving object was changing location. Today is back. Tomorrow is leg. The next day is shoulder. The next day is heart. It's just moving. But I had an understanding. <laughs> his fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge our floor. I'm born with unquenchable fire. And scripture also made us to understand that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the life of God is in this communion. Now as she partake of the communion, say, Jesus, if truly you are in this communion, wherever this moving object is, locate it and flush it out. Guess what happened? It looks like her whole body was a, it's like the thing was looking for every available escape route. She was just restless. So she called and said, Peace be still by the blood. You are partaking of communion, go and sleep. That was the last day the moving object stayed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Scripture say, <laughs> When a strong man keepeth his goods, his house is what? Intact. But when a stronger than he is come, he said he shall dispossess him. Now this one is a stronger than he. Whatever has possessed your body that Jesus did not plant, it must fade away in the name of Jesus. I had another young man, his name is Kingsley. He had what they call sinusitis. Running nose. His own running nose was terrible. Why? Because it made it difficult for him to marry. His own running nose has already carried a unique odor, smelling odor. He cannot stay close to you. He will always stay far. Because his nose smells like a wound that is rotting. So I said, it was a communion service, healing communion service like this. I said, there is enough power in this communion to kill that sinusitis. Now guess what? We never knew the mother had the same sickness. So as he was healed, everything clean. The mother said, wait till, that's the way they do you. I know they see him again. No. He said, mama, I don't heal. Oh. Mama, I don't heal. He said, where you go? Where you go? Where you go? He said, now nah, that's a winner church. You know, they call it winner church. So the mother now followed him. On the Wednesday communion service, he said, Lord, now you hear my picking, you know, as I take this thing to make my own go to. That was how she partook of the communion and she was healed of the same sickness. 
do you know that the woman did thanksgiving? She did thanksgiving for God healing her of that affliction. I want to say to someone here, no matter what is troubling you, this is the all-purpose drug. Even if you are giving food in the dream, hear me? The spell of that arrow will be destroyed by this communion. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. I had one sister. They are in UK now. They had a baby. The baby refused to eat. They've gone to the hospital. They're giving them all manner of drugs. The baby refused to eat. What was making her to cry? Nobody knows. She brought the baby in tears to church. Say, Pastor, this baby must not die in my hand. Whatever you need to do now, do. I just brought the communion. I said, Jesus, you are the healer. Your life. You said, my flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. Baby, I speak to you as your spiritual father. Whatever is making you reject food, by this communion, I break that spell. We just dipped the communion inside. Uh, they took the bread and put it inside the blood and put it in our mouth. We put it again. We put it all time. So I said, keep putting it. She will throw away some, retain some. So that was how they managed and forced some into her mouth and she left. Guess what happened? How many days does SMA stay for a two months old baby? Who can guess? Eh? Is it what? Three days? Eh? One week, she finished her own every day. Is it normal? She was eating per second, per second. In fact, she was revenging all the ones she didn't eat. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? After three days, the mother came back. Pastor, did they finish food though? So I said, I should reverse the prayer. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, should I shock someone again? This communion can kill cancer. <laughs> cancer is a spirit and it's going to jam another spirit. Scripture says, When the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. And not only that, it's a swallowing blood. Whatever wants to swallow your head, this communion will swallow it. Now, another, I had another metron qualified. In fact, she was overqualified. The son was suffering from sickle cell anemia, SS. Now, they have done everything possible to keep this child. But every time he keeps running into crisis, she came all the way from Asaba. I said, Jesus can heal your child. The genes of Jesus, there is no SS. Are you hear what I'm saying now? And scripture say we share the same gene because we are heirs of Christ and joint heir with God. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So, Jesus does not have SS. So, whatever disfigure the genetic composition of this child, it will be healed. Every week, she will come and carry three liters of communion. She was giving this child regularly. The first month passed, not in the second month. I knew that their faith was growing. Now, after the third month, see with me after the third month. SS turn AA. They did test in Asaba. They say, I'm not sure. They came to Ugeli, did another test. They say, I'm not too sure. They went to Wari, did another test. They want to be double sure. They did the test four times. They did another one in Ozoro. When they now finally confirmed, she told the husband that uh, the boy is now AA. The husband say, What? Because the husband was working in hospital management board. You know, <laughs> book don't confuse the man's head. The man had to come down, went to all the places to confirm. And 
He went back again to Asaba to do another test, making it the fifth one. When he now confirmed it, the man was broken down in tears. What they never thought was possible, God did it. Let me say this one before we rise up. Another sister came from Sapele. She was due for marriage. Somebody has come all of a sudden HIV positive. She almost ran mad. She said, Pastor, whatever you need to do, I must marry. I said, Are you born again? He said, I don't born. If you want me to reborn again, I go reborn. So that if there's anything that is doing me, so I, I, I told her, believe in Jesus. Jesus can heal you. There is no scripture say he healed them all. All. There is no one difficult for him to heal. All you just need to do is to be believing and be speaking against it. She took the communion and left. She told the husband, let's postpone the wedding. I must be healed. She didn't tell him that she was HIV positive. It was after God has healed her that the man knew that this was what was delaying her. After that, HIV positive turned negative. I give someone a divine assurance. As you partake of this communion, whatever has vowed to waste you, because sickness is the gateway to death, by this communion, that spell will be broken. Rise up to your feet right now, wherever you are. I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Jesus said, this is the cup. This is the flesh that a man should eat and not die. Is this not the cup of blessing which the Lord has blessed? I want you to pray, Lord, as I partake of this communion, any root of bitterness, root of anger, any defiling root, uncontrollable appetite. God just told me now that as someone partake of this communion, communion, it will be healed of masturbation. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Another person now, for good foremost, you have not seen your mercies. As you partake of this communion, the spell will be broken in the name of Jesus. That amen is too weak. In one minute, cry out to God. Lord, let your healing power flow. Let your healing power flow. Let your healing power flow. Another person is going to be healed of memory loss. Lift up your voice and pray. As I partake of this communion, whatever could not be found in Jesus that is attacking my head by your flesh and by your blood, let my healing take place. Let my recovery take place. Let my restoration take place. Leande boro shekote zizo nake lekoteri aba lishado rato peleres. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All eyes close, all heads bow. You are here. You are not born again. That is the first healing you need. You want to make it right with Jesus? Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me wherever you are, come quickly right now. I want to pray with you. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you pray that prayer with me, come. You don't need to be ashamed. Come.